Previously we have created videos around web scraping, we were mostly scraping sites like Amazon, LinkedIn and Instagram and we were extracting a lot of interesting data from there. But we ran into a few problems. Those problems were mostly around CAPTCHA, uh, proxies and generally getting kicked out of a session because the websites are thinking that we are bots, which is actually true. There are certain mechanisms how to avoid all of that, so we could create a mechanism for avoiding captures, for proxying our requests, for creating sessions and sticky sessions, but there are simple ways to do that. One provider that can actually take that burden from us is Scraper.API. So basically what Scraper API does, it takes a burden from our shoulders by creating a proxy. So what does that mean? Our requests go to the scraper.api API, and that API is going to proxy our requests to the dedicated site that we want to scrape. So they're going to take a lot of burden from our shoulders, uh, including stuff like redirecting our calls to come from a certain country. So for example, certain websites are going to display certain content and restrict your views based on your country. Uh, for certain ones, you're going to need sessions which stick and the website knows that it's coming from, a, from the same session. For certain other ones, you will want to change your sessions. Then you can also render JavaScript, which is also quite a huge problem if you want to render JavaScript content. We can set custom headers, sessions, geographic locations, as we, as we have already mentioned. We can also use post and put requests and not only get requests. And the most important points from all are that we are going to avoid captures, we are going to be able to rotate our IP addresses, and we are going to be able to bypass all the bot restrictions that those websites present. So let me start by opening my console and pushing some requests out. So I have opened Node.js since this is my ID of choice. And what we are going to do first is send a simple curl request to get ourselves familiar with the endpoint. So it is simple as that. So now let's paste the curl request in. So what we will need to do at this point is going to provide an API key. So what you can do is go to the website and register at scraper.api and you can use the link in the description down below where you can get the free trial and you can get up to 15% off at your registration. This video is also sponsored by Scraper.api, so if you head over there and register, that's also going to help out this YouTube channel. So what I'm going to do at this point is going to paste my API key and I'm going to use some website here. So for example, in this case, I'm going to use my own website which is in this case HTTPS and click enter. Now we need to wait a little bit and we're going to have the response back. So as you can see, we got the response back and it is ordered in a certain way. So it got extracted our raw content. So this is our content which got cut off here because we are running this in the console. Uh, we see our forms, we see our headers, images, input fields, links, parsed the HTML and raw content, which we can't display here entirely since we are running a curl command and the number of output characters is limited. For that, we can use a library. So we could actually change the parameters and have this run via curl, but it would be much more better to have a library to do the job for us. And there are different libraries which we can use. So we can use Python, Node.js, PHP, Ruby and Java. In this case, I'm going to use Node.js since it's quite simple to set up and um, in most cases, everything you need is npm. So in order to set this up, we are going to run npm install scraper API SDK. So let us paste this into the console here and now we can click enter. Once the library has installed, we are going to have our node modules folder and our package log.json file. So the next step is going to be to actually create our scraper file. So for that, I'm just going to create scraper.js. And now let's head back to our documentation over here. So I'm going to copy the first piece of documentation here. And we're going to basically do the same thing as we have done with the curl request earlier. 
I'm going to paste in the API key over here and I'm going to type out the website here. So let's save this and now we can run this by typing out node scraper.js. Hit enter and let's wait for the response. This was quite fast this time because we were able to reuse the, for the same session. And basically we can see the entire HTML output here. Uh, so what we could do at this point is scrape this and try to find the pieces and bits of the website that we are interested in. But this is linked in a different video where I go in depth with this. So you can check out that other video if you want to get deep into web scraping. So let's get back to the curl here and see what functionalities we can use. So for example, if you are web scraping a certain website like LinkedIn and we want to log in into LinkedIn, we could use a post request. After that post request, we would most probably would like to have the same session attached to it. So in that case, what we could do is add a session number. And as long as the session number is the same, we are going to use the same session. So let's try going to a website like LinkedIn, for example. Copy the URL. And let us first do a simple get request to see what's going to come out of that. Now hit again enter and let's wait for the response. So here we got our response back. So basically it's again the same response. We have an HTML output of the entire website that we are scraping. We can of course use different subdomains and then redirect to different sub pages from the website as we progress through our web scraping. So for example, if you're going to paginate the website and so on and so forth. So basically the web scraping part is still up to you. So you have to go to the website, you have still to uh, inspect the element and you still have to research the exact bits and pieces that you want to scrape. And if you want to go deeper into that, I'm going to cover this in the next video. Or if you want to take a look how I have done this uh, on Amazon and Instagram, you can head over to the other videos linked in the description. But basically what we are achieving with scraper.api is avoiding captures, uh, rotating our IPs and creating a request in such a way that we avoid the common pitfalls when scraping different websites. And as already mentioned, you can use a simple API request, in this case, for example, using a promise. And we can just um, do this the normal way. We would do this in Node.js, which are specifying the URL. So in this case, we would specify the API um, scraper API and then we would specify our API key and the URL where we want to go and the type of request we want to send. Or if you go to the SDK here, uh, it is made simpler for us where we just use our scraper client and just use a post to get the same out of it. If there is something that is not covered in the SDK, it is always a good idea to just fall back to the normal API request. So as already mentioned, if you want to try this out, um, you can head over to Scraper API using the link from the description down below to get the free trial and up to 15% off. So I hope you found this video useful and it's going to help you with your scraping endeavors. And as I have already mentioned, in the next video, we're going to go to deeper into this and create a real web scraper using Scraper API, scraping something like um, Amazon or LinkedIn, trying to maybe get contacts out of LinkedIn pages. And if you have any ideas, just leave a comment down below. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.